At Wasa Dadienso in the western region, we encountered one of such mining expeditions at the edge of the town, very close to the main road. A bear's eye view revealed deep excavation in the town. They call it Wasaman mining. We were not allowed to film close to the ground. The leader of the mining group, a middle-aged woman, popularly called Antisimpu, followed by some men, told us their work there is illegal. She told our news team they've paid 85,000 cities in attempts to regularize their work. <laughs> When government requested the regularization of mining, we started the process and paid 850. We nearly got it registered, but we didn't get any support from our leaders. The MCE will not sign papers to get us through. Our leaders prefer we do this kind of mining in secret. The environmental effects could be seen close to the roadside. Streams of mining residue flow down from the alluvial washing bays on the hill close to the main road. Houses at risk of collapse from deep excavation in the Wasa Dariasu area. For instance, on our way from the Bia River, we saw from the main Diaso Ayamfre Road active mining a few meters from the roadside. In what the operators described as community mining, a number of pumping machines and other earth-moving equipment were seen actively harming the earth away. Ragged, dusty, and riddled with potholes, this is the Pristia Bogosu Road, leading to our next stop, River Ancobra. Flowing about 190 kilometers south to the Gulf of Guinea, the once beautiful water source has changed to a highly polluted milky brown. The Ghana Water Resources Commission's turbidity values for February 2022 pegs the turbidity level for the Ancobra River at 3,260 at the Pristia catch point. The pollution is visible on the Pristia Heman Bridge. But why has various interventions aimed at fighting illegal mining failed? Chairman of the Upper East Branch of the Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners, Robert Tampuari, holds this view. So many questions have been asked, who is behind this? And the blame will say that it's the small scale miners and the illegal miners, they are all the same. But we are not the same. But sometimes, if you don't have the way out, people may give you a bad name. And I think that we have been several platforms, some of us always mention that the security is not the solution to the problem in illegal mining in this country. The duty of the security is to keep this country clean and keep the mining sector clean for everybody to enjoy as the way we all came and met it. The security will be there with their numbers and the bad things are still continued doing. Last year, the government of Ghana organized this program. What happened, and we're still seeing what my brother Erasmus Saredoko is showing us on this. Many of the interventions by successive governments have centered on the use of the security agencies, arrest, and few successful prosecutions. Experts believe the application of force has not yielded the desired results. Government seems to be working, all the institutions seem to be working, but we are not seeing the desired result. Dr. Rejoice Rekunjebi is a lecturer at the Department of Planning and Sustainability at the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Sunyani. She has been researching into the challenges confronting artisanal small scale mining in Ghana. I believe that we need to change things. We need to stop using force and brutality. We need to stop the one form of training and then do a whole comprehensive thing to be able to manage the situation. If not, we'll do this today. Tomorrow, we'll come back to the same thing and we'll still be talking. This machine was introduced by the Chinese. 
is called the chamfan. When mounted on a raft, miners are able to mine directly on the water source. They use it to dig and wash samples directly from the riverbed. It is a major water polluting tool. The Ofin River has been a direct effect of this type of mining. The river is now a pale shadow of itself, looking lifeless. So this is the Ofin River. And it will shock you to know that this used to be very, very clean. But now, as in this bottle, you could see the color of the river. Highly polluted, according to the Ghana Water Resources Commission data released recently. Samples tested by the Water Resources Commission at the Odasso catchment area of the Ofin in February 2022 recorded 1,534 NTU described as highly polluted. The Lands Ministry says it has recently seized over 800 of these machines on the Ofin. But a recent trip to Abesia Abumpe Beposo, all in the Achumampunwa districts of Ashanti, showed over 200 of these machines actively mining on the Ofen River. Deputy Lands Minister Benito Ousubiu answers why. We have a lot of challenges because you get to the place where the river is, and these people are in the middle of the river. We have no means of getting to them, and you cannot shoot them. These are guns. <laughs> so there were instances where they would stand on their boats and wave at us. <laughs> and we are saying we have to. I mean, uh, we are uh, helpless at it. Miners, in many instances, have exposed water bodies to heavy metal contamination, exposing communities to unsafe water. The situation is evident in research conducted on soil samples from the Pra River Basin by a scientist with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Exploration of hazard indices revealed that human beings are at risk in terms of this activity that goes on in the environment. Eugene Ansa, as part of his PhD thesis, assessed the impact of artisanal gold mining activities on the environmental quality of the basin. The metal concentrations were found to be higher than the World Health Organization threshold for safe drinking water. In terms of quantities that were obtained, they were found to be above the World Health Organization standards per the metal content being a snake, cadmium, cobalt, copper, nickel, lead, and zinc in the water column. However, these uh, concentrations were also explored from the soil and sediment samples, and their threshold limits were compared to standards. It was revealed that all the standards that was compared with including established background concentrations of metals in Ghanaian soil, the current levels in the Pra River Basin were above them. Despite Ghana being a signatory to the Menamata Convention, highlights of which include a ban on new mercury mines and the phasing out of existing ones, the use of mercury in artisanal mining is still a major feature in Ghana. We found indications of the use and discharge of mercury into the environment on our visit to the mining sites within the Odahon Forest Enclave at Mansu Tontukrum in the Ashanti region. If you look uh, on the floor here, you can see this mercury. Mercury dropped on the floor. And these pipes, looking at where it's going, it's leading to, let's say, uh, an, uh, another source of water. So all these things going to the water 
and people going to drink is going to be harmful to them. The UNEP um, global emission will say that about 37% of mercury comes from ASM. And in Ghana, we have 91.3% out of the various sources of mercury coming from ASM. Dr. So, Lily Lisa Yevuga is a scientist with the University of Energy and Natural Resources. She has been researching into the use of mercury in artisanal mining in Ghana. Ghana has become a gateway for mercury um, access within the country. Burkina Faso, um, Cote d'Ivoire, they are all getting their mercury from Ghana. As to how legal or illegal it is, I cannot talk about it. The usage in some parts of the country where the mining activities are going on is quite scary. This is very toxic. As it goes into the system, it's very carcinogenic. So it affects your neurological, um, it causes neurological disorder, it affects the liver, the kidney, and for pregnant women, it affects the fetus, um, leading to disabled children. In water, we have what we call bioaccumulation. The fishes take it in and then it's accumulates in their body. Now, fish, bigger fish feed on smaller fish, and then the magnification is bigger. And human beings also go in for this fish, and then we eat it. And that even makes it worse for us. These nature crimes affect agriculture. These polluted water sources cannot be used for farming. The landscape is converted to pits and gullies, making farming impossible in affected areas. One major crop affected by irresponsible mining in Ghana is cocoa. Many farmers are either forced or made to voluntarily sell off cocoa farms for between 5,000 and 30,000 Ghana cities. The illegal miners dig in the water sources and people's cocoa farms. All the places they are mining used to be cocoa farms. They sell one acre of cocoa farm for 15,000 cities. If they need money, they accept 10,000 to clear the farms. At Enyinamso, these farmers pleaded with our news team to appeal to authorities to help drive illegal miners from destroying their farms. So this is what remains of the river Enyinam. And as you can see, it has been stopped right here. And the miners are now digging deep within the riverbed itself. And so it is denying farmers here water to one water their uh, crops and even use it uh, to spray their cocoa farms. <laughs> I don't have access to my farm. These pits they have dug around the farm will force the stream to overflow and submerge my farm. They want us to sell the cocoa farm to them. But we say no, because money from Galamse will be gone in moments, but the fruits of the farm will endure for years for my descendants to benefit. Even after our reports, no action was taken, and some of the farmers were forced to sell their farms after trenches were dug around them. If there is any eventuality, it is the chief of the town who will be held responsible and not the one who sold the land. We want them to stop mining or else we rally the people to storm the place to stop them. At Achiase, in the Jabin municipality of the Ashanti region, traditional authorities had to take a stand against miners who were mining and polluting the river Anuru and destroying a once beautiful farming valley. Previously, I could use four acres to grow okra, two acres for rice, and continue to farm on the land all year round. But now, if you look at how the land has been destroyed, is it possible to grow anything here? Presently, I can't work here anymore. Experts believe Ghana is heading towards a future blacklist of its gold due to the illegal processes involved in the small-scale mining sector. The world wants to see that livelihood of people are not impacted upon and that people do not make their monies out of any means without 
it being what monitored. Professor Emmanuel Ahin is a professor of applied geology. What they are considering is not just because people are killing people, others to get the gold, but they are looking at how the gold is, what is exploited. The current devastation of forest reserves and pollution of water bodies in search of gold could lead to a ban on Ghana's gold. Director of Research for the Ghana Chamber of Bullion Traders, Henry Osei, says the prevailing environmental circumstances spells doom for Ghana. It is a reality. I mean, it's happened to us in Diamond twice when the UN gave us the, the order to, to, to go on to the uh, Kimberley Process Certificate. Now, the gold industry is being handled by the LBMA, and they are all concerned about the devastation of the environment. And because of technology, by their standard, based on the OECD, you even have to by, uh, the, indicate the GPS co coordinates of every mine that you buy your gold from. And this is not, this, they are not getting all this information, which means that the, the gold is coming from illicit source, uh, you cannot prove that it was mine responsibly. And on the basis of that, now Dubai, which used to be the alternative when we were banned in 2013 by the Europeans and Americans, are also being squeezed to go by these same standards, which they were even fighting against in the past. So for this year, the KYC forms that came from Dubai were even more stringent than what it used to be in the past. So gradually they are squeezing us up. Irresponsible mining is a contributor to climate change. The activities of mining itself using diesel powered engines where the production of oxides of nitrogen, sulfur and carbon have their own consequence. Scientists have found that turbidity has a positive correlation with temperature. Dr. Anthony Osei Chumesi is a hydrologist and senior lecturer with the Kumasi Technical University. Turbid waters have um, a direct relationship with uh, temperatures. For example, they absorb, turbid waters absorb more energy from the solar radiation than normal ordinary waters. So what happens is that they tend to increase the surface uh, temperatures of these turbid waters. So in the process, they, they, they create localized warming along the local areas. For that matter, it affects the climate in a certain sense. Global Forest Watch data indicates that between 2001 and 2021, trees sitting on 1.41 million hectares of land tree cover were destroyed across Ghana. 1.41 million hectares of land is equal to about half the size of the entire Shanti region, which is about 2.4 million hectares. This represents 20% of all the land in Ghana that has had trees sitting on them since the country came into existence. Though the data doesn't state what percentage of this is caused by mining, this 2018 drone footage showing miles of degraded forest in the western region gives an inkling of the contribution of irresponsible mining. Our visits to the Apamprama Forest Reserve in the Shanta region, Tabosri and Ankwaso Forest in the western region reveals the devastation caused by miners supersedes what illegal loggers do to the country's forests. The situation, the Forestry Commission says, has got them paying more attention to irresponsible mining in forests in recent times. John Aloti is the chief executive officer of the commission. The focus has been um, on illegal logging, uh, prevention of uh, fire outbreak, and also looking at the livelihoods and other non-forest um, uh, products that we find in the uh, non-timber forest products that we find in the forest. But now we have to deal with illegal mining. It's become even bigger because the impact is not, uh, you know, uh, more pronounced. Uh, than illegal logging. On August 17th this year, the Minerals Commission in a press release stated that the Lands Minister has not issued any license for minerals prospecting in any forest reserve.
the release signed by Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Martin Aisi, referred to a letter by Akonta Mining Limited dated August 8, 2022, which was an application for an entry permit to enter the Tanonimre Forest Reserve at Samraboy in the Western Region. The release said the application must be processed, quote, subject to the Honorable Minister of Lands and Natural Resources Directive on Mining in Forest Reserve. But even before the Lands Ministry would indicate publicly its position on the application, our checks indicate active mining in the Tanonimre Forest Reserve. A visit to the forest revealed large portions of the reserve already mined and degraded. This drone footage, taken a few days ago, shows active mining linked to Akunta Mining Limited under the protection of armed personnel. The forest reserve is being destroyed with impunity even at the time of airing this report. Despite Love News' expose on military personnel protecting miners in the Odaho section of the Apamprama Forest Reserve, security personnel are still providing protection for miners who are pillaging the reserve currently, as corroborated by the Mentiahene of Bekwai, Nanakusi Frempong Kotobre. <laughs> My district is Amasa Central. That is where I have my cuckoo farm. In that area, there's a forest called Kobo Forest. The forest is guarded by soldiers as people mine inside the forest. I had a confrontation with the soldiers. They said they are on duty. What kind of duty is being held in the forest? Ministers and people in government are the ones protecting them. Because I can't hire military men, if I could, I would ask them to accompany me to the farm to weed. So why are we witnessing worsening pollution and degradation of forests when government is spending so much on anti-illegal mining interventions? There's nothing about pass and fail. We are all in this together. Daryl Bosu is Deputy National Director of Arocha Ghana, an environmental conservation organization. There seems to be inequity in administration of justice and that is breeding the impunity but well, why do you arrest Ghanaians put them in jail and allow the foreigners to go you get it so i think until that is done we need political leadership we need equitable administration of justice fair justice system to make sure this is being done i mean what is happening we need some some i'll say what some um, explanation from government that is why i consciously consciously use the word collusion. If people who are located within the interstices of power don't allow externalities to come in with heavy machines, do what they do, it will not be possible. Director of Research at the Kofi Annan Peacekeeping Training Center, Professor Kusienin, blames an apparent collusion between illegal miners and people in power for the state's failure to fight the menace with the seriousness it deserves. So when we use those extraordinary powers, measures, the state must then identify. Kusienin, you, you are in this office. Have you issued licenses? Have you done due diligence? Have you failed to do, do what you ought to do? Those extraordinary powers allows the state to then punish those who have failed to protect the interest of the state. These irresponsible mining practices across the country constitute a breach of the country's laws. Section 992C of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006, Act 703, as amended, criminalizes the involvement of foreigners in small-scale mining. Though Chinese miners are frequently arrested on the field, many of them are hardly prosecuted. Justice that doesn't lead to reversing a problem that 
is making all of us insecure. It's going to drive us into environmental refugeeship. It's not enough. I think sometimes justice must be exerted in such a manner that it sends a clear signal that you cross the line, you use your office. At a recent transformational dialogue on small-scale mining organized by the University of Energy and Natural Resources, head of the Department of Sustainable Mineral Resources Development, Dr. Abdul Wadu Mumin, proposed a solution. We propose to all stakeholders in this country, including government and the private sector, that given the needed support, government, in partnership with the University of Energy and Natural Resources, would establish substations of several uh, satellite receivers across the country. And these substations will transmit on daily basis high-resolution satellite imagery to the main receiver that we have on our main university campus. And we would then have the main behind the computers on a daily basis to monitor the new imagery that shall be transmitted to the receiving station and can quickly alert anyone on the ground that there is a mess at this particular location and attention must be immediately deployed. It was clear through our visits that the country's mining regulatory institutions need to be strengthened and adequately resourced to give proper oversight on the sector. Enforcement of the law needs to wean itself from political interference. The problem needs a major political statement from the president to identify and punish political actors using their influence to engage in the illegality. Perhaps the country needs to choose champagne for a few or safe drinking water in a green environment for all now.